Yeah. So when you look at the draft and you could include AJ Brown because you traded away the 18th pick as part of your draft class, um, then you got a shit ton of talent. And when I looked at the odds here for um, right after the draft, because we had our free agency, we had our draft, and now we're going to start getting to OTAs, camps, and then some of the free agent signings that haven't been signed yet will be signed like um, the Honey Badger. But looking at uh, football, I wanted to look at some futures. And the NFC East right now, yesterday I looked at it. I wonder if it changed. No, it didn't. So right now the Eagles are plus 240 to win a division. Yeah. And with this influx of talent, we have the New York Giants um, at 640, I mean 650, the Washington Commanders at 450, and the, the odds on favor is Dallas playing 105. When I look at this division, obviously Dallas should be the lead favorite to win the division. Um, they have a solid team. Um, they lost a lot of players on defense, but on offense, they're still they're still pretty decent. Um, and you still have the best quarterback in the division. Right. I don't think there's any questions about that. Um, and then we have the Philadelphia Eagles. This influx of talent that we just got from this draft, all possible impact players. I wasn't a big fan of the Davis pick. I'm not going to lie. I would have went either Hamilton or Johnson, in my opinion. Um, but because I just don't think Davis can be a three down guy. And then who runs the ball? Who like, we don't face Derrick Henry twice a year. Right. So right. it's not like, you know, and the, the people think they are, right, you're you replacing Cox. Well, you're not because Fletch was a beast coming in, not saying Davis can't be, but different player, different style, different body size. And Fletch got to the quarterback. People forget Fletch averaged like seven or eight sacks in his first five or six years. And then he had his pro, and then and then he went into flex mode, flex flex mode for Fletch. Went for four or five years straight. He was an All Pro, getting right. eight or more sacks. So right. I don't think Davis is there yet, and I don't think Davis will ever be there yet because I don't think Davis can touch a double digit sack, especially at his weight. The thing is, you don't necessarily need that. And right. where I would go with the pushback a little bit is, I think Fletch is definitely at the end. You know. As much as people, as much as you know, we all love Fletch, but the defensive line as a whole last year they needed Jordan Davis. They needed they needed that pick, and the reason I say that is because it's it, people. You know, when they look at the when they look at the Eagles' defensive line in general, they they the names look good, but they weren't getting they weren't putting the quarterback on the ground, right? And I don't know if you you can blame scheme for a part of it but a lot of it was guys just they couldn't get there you know that's why you saw the games where you know justin herbert would go 32 for 38 mm -hmm. you know uh what's his name uh Derek carr went 30 32 for 36 against them and granted some of it is because of the, our secondary however if you had a a defensive line that could get to the quarterback that would help offset some of what the um inexperience of that secondary was so they gotta you know the whole thing with the i think this year you know there'll be a better defensive line I, but will it really matter that much because you don't have a corner opposite of slay and you still need two um safeties that are starting quality safeties so, yeah, I mean, they tried, right? Obviously, they tried for Williams. Um, you know, if you think think about it, what they, they've done this year with getting Williams, I don't know if they would have been able to sound, sign A.J. Brown because I think they gave Williams a pretty decent contract. So, yeah. but, yeah, flexibility with some of those signings because, you know, you, all your money is not tied up into a quarterback. Right. So, it would be it would have been interesting to see if some of those free agent signings would have happened early, earlier on. But, Looking at the odds right now, um, I think the Eagles are very live to win its division. And like you were insinuating before with some of, you know, some of the other quarterbacks of their accuracy, that's all on Hurts, right? It's, it's been a long time since I've seen, I think, since Donovan and when they went and got T.O., seeing where the organization really went all in right. to get talent into this team. And, and the funny thing is, 
The Eagles didn't change who they are. What do they do? They build from the inside out. They always have. It's been a staple here since Andy's been here. They always build from the inside out. And what were their first two draft picks? Linemen, right? So, and, and people even talk themselves into liking the center in the second round. Just because Kelsey had came out, said, hey, I've been watching this guy. I helped recruit this guy. This is the guy who's the best comparison to me. Um, and I think the good thing was what I didn't like about the pick was that they're going to say he's going to he's he looked like he's going to see if he can play at, at guard, which right. makes sense because Dickerson was a center from Bama, and he came here and they tried him at guard, and now he looks like he might be a Pro Bowl guard, and they're not even I mean they drafted a center in the second round, so <coughs> excuse me. So if you think about that, um, all three even their top four picks have potential of playing. And their top three picks, you could potentially say two of them could be pro bowlers and impact players now. But it's all on Hurts. If you if you're a Jalen Hurts fan, if you're a Jalen Hurts believer, right. then you're running to the window to put this bet in. 